Hey everybody, welcome back to Tour Validated. Chris McCormick here with Marshall and Spencer, and we are at Fujikura HQ here in Carlsbad, California. And today, something really cool. We've got an opportunity to kind of look behind the curtain and see how some of the best chefs in the industry are made. So before we jump into this, make sure to give us a like, subscribe to the page, and with that, let's get into it. Let's go check out some stuff. All right, so this is kind of step one in how we make a graphite shaft, and that all comes down to material. Now we keep all of our material stored at a very cool temperature because it is a combination of carbon fiber and resin. We don't want the resin to over cure or overheat too much. We'll get into that on purpose later when we actually are curing and formulating a shaft. But this is kind of what it looks like. It all starts out as a big sheet, and based on designs and based on what we're trying to achieve, our engineers would pull the appropriate corresponding rolls. We take it over to the cutting table, and then we start to lay out the shaft piece by piece. This is a lot more than I was expecting. Yeah, we, we, so we not, do. Not the old school composite where it's just layers of the same material. Now we've got multi-material construction and this is really impressive. Absolutely, when we, we get into higher shafts, uh, higher end shafts and performance driven shafts, especially like a Ventus part like that, we start to integrate a lot of different material usage and that's kind of where you see the, the whole buffet here. We've got, a, we've got a big recipe to choose from. Our, uh, our VP of engineering always makes a joke, just trying to make the best cake we can and I'm using all the ingredients I got. And with all these available, why not? Yeah, so we'll show you how we cut them next. Let's head over there. So after we take the material out of the fridge, we bring it to this cutting table where we then cut the material. They then bring it over to, this is a laser cutter, and they type in exactly what they need and how they need it to be cut, and the laser literally goes up and down and cuts it into plies. And then those plies we separate, and we put them over basically stacked on these, and they're basically ready to go once uh, a design sheet is prepared. So we used to have an older machine that we used to do by hand. Luckily, nobody lost their fingers in it, but it was just a big blade that would come down. Nowadays, technology's on our side. So just coming from cutting table, now yep. we've got all of our composites. You got it. And what station are we at here? So this is the rolling station. We're gonna cut everything from that table into what we call basically flags or plies. We're gonna take all that out and lay it out on a table. Now what Kevin's gonna do is, each design is based around a steel mandrel. So he will pull the corresponding mandrel for this particular design. We're gonna do a driver, right? Driver design in each notch on that mandrel is what's called a clocking location. Now Kevin's gonna use his guideline here to tell him where the flags attach on that mandrel. So we'll roll it out piece by piece. This is exactly what we do at our factories. This is just a very miniature version of it. Sure. But you see assembly lines of folks doing exactly what Kevin's doing, all by hand, all attached by hand. And I'll just have him basically grab a mandrel, put some material on there, and show you kind of the process. Now there's a lot of geometric shapes going on here. Are. and. Same material, different materials? This one's a mix. So mix we'll have materials. some different tonnages, we'll have some different uh, weights, and we'll have a few different things going on in this particular design, especially for a driver, a club with length. Sure. We want to be very particular about where we place weight. So now that we've gone through cutting, rolling, wrapping, it's been in the oven. Yep. Where are we at now? Graphite's nice and cured, and so what we're going to do now is extract the mandrel that we rolled it on top of. So that's what this machine's going to do. We'll, we'll do some footage and showing you how that actually works, but that's sort of the last step. And what we're left with is essentially an empty graphite tube or a graphite golf shaft. So Marshall, now we've got shaft off the mandrel. What step do we got now? Yeah, so now we need to make sure the quality control of all the products are coming out very, very the same. So. What we got behind us is a digital bend tester, and this is telling me how many millimeters of deflection or bending are occurring. And we, we measure the tip section as well as the handle. So I will put this in. This is gonna zero out. This weight's gonna drop down and apply pressure to the shaft, and you can see that it's bending. So in this tip section, there's 86.2 millimeters of bending occurring. The lower the number, the stiffer it is. The higher the number, the softer it is. And we publish all of these specs in our product spec book as well. And, and we have a very tight tolerance in all of our shafts that come out in the aftermarket to make sure that they're coming out the same every single time. So that's very important. So we'll turn it around, do the handle section as well. And just remember, the lower the number, the stiffer it is, the higher the number, the softer it is. So 60 millimeters of deflection in the handle, this thing's a piece of rebar. So Marshall coming out of the bend tester, over to the CPM machine machine I'm familiar with in our studios, but this is a little bit more intense than what I'm used to working with here. So let's walk us through, what do we got going on with this guy? Yeah, so CPM machine, we measure at seven and a quarter inches, which is different. Some people measure at zero, three, and five inches, and that can change that number. As you know, head weight can change that number. The length of a shaft can change that number, right? To make sure. it play softer. Um, it's just another quality control 
measurement that we use to make sure our products are coming out the same every single time. And that's very, very important to us is quality control. So, no, 100%. And so this right here that I just screwed onto the, uh, the tip section, we're mocking head weight. So this is a 200.6 gram. We know that not every single head on the market's 200 grams. Some of them are 210, some of them are 205, but old days, 202, 200 used to be. That's it. <laughs> used to be it. So put that in here, reset that. So this particular shaft, and like we were, like we found out earlier with the digital bend tester being that it didn't have very many millimeters of deflection. Wow. The CPM for a raw shaft is 306. That is a beast. That so, is uh, aggressive. So that's why I'm thinking that this might be uh, heavy and probably an extra stiff of some sort. So um, yeah, just a, just another quality control measurement to make sure that everything's coming out good. So Marshall, now we have confirmation that this thing is absolute beast of a shaft. Where do we take it from here? Yeah, so now we're gonna take this over to a machine we created here at Fujikura. It's called the rack machine. It's a torture mechanism for a golf shaft. And what we're after is to make sure that this shaft is gonna hold up during the course of play. So let's go over there and check it out. It's a three point bend operation that we're basically making sure the shaft is going to hold up during the course of play because the last thing we want is a bunch of returns or breakage issues on our product. Sure. And so what we're able to do is we're able to set the load and we're able to spin it so it's simulating impact. The shaft spins about 30 times a second so that's about 30 times 30 impacts in one second. So it spins and spins all the way until it eventually breaks. Some shafts that are really strong never end up breaking, but right. we're just making sure that the quality is good, that it's going to hold up and there's no returns on our products. After quite a while, um, it actually ended up breaking towards the towards the tip section there after a decent amount of cycles, but that's the, the amount of cycles that it was able to complete was well above, you know, what we would deem passable. So this sure. was by far for a lightweight, pretty flexible product. It's very, very strong. We wouldn't see barely any returns on it unless somebody just you know, gave it the old... Uh, it, may, it may have happened once or twice out there, right? Mr. and Mrs. Havocamp's backyard, give it the old slam. So sure. um, this thing is very, very passable. And if a shaft is going to fail, I mean, more often than not, that's where we're going to see the failure point. Usually towards the tip. The tip will always be the weakest part of the shaft just due to the geometry of it, right? Sure. So usually it would fail here. We have we have seen some that fail maybe a little bit higher up in the shaft, or, um, but usually it would be towards the tip section. Now that we've seen cutting, rolling, baking the whole process. Don't forget breaking, that's the fun part. Breaking, breaking was definitely yeah. the cool part. Fun part. But now that we've got almost finished product, yep. where are we at now? Well, one of the things that I told you early on is that this facility allows us to do everything from prototype, ideation, all the way to finished cosmetics. So that's sort of the last step in our process is we gotta make it look pretty, right? Sure. So we have an incredible team of graphic designers and of, of painters and techs that have been doing this for two, three decades between them. They know what they're doing, they make really cool stuff. So you'll okay. see them take the raw shaft, put it in an apparatus, literally pull the paint onto the shaft, and let it dry, and then once it dries, put on a heat applied decal. And that's basically gonna finish it up. Oh, very cool. Well guys, that was a lot of fun today. And Marshall Spencer, I want to thank you guys so much for having us out. You got Absolutely. it. It was, uh, it was definitely a special experience, kind of taking a look at everything that goes into some of these high performance aftermarket shafts. A lot shafts. of steps. A, a lot, lot of steps. steps. And it definitely validates the, I mean, just all of the work that goes into some of the top performing products that we see on all the major tours around the world. And don't forget, give this video a like, subscribe. We'll see you next time.